Moringa oleifera, also known as horseradish tree, and the miracle tree grows in Africa, Asia, South America, and elsewhere, and has been described as being a superfood because of its dense nutritional value. For example, in just 3.5 ounces of dry Moringa leaves, they contain seven times as much vitamin C as oranges, nine times as much protein as yogurt, 10 times more vitamin A than carrots, 17 times as much calcium as milk, 15 times the calcium that are in bananas, and a whopping 25 times the iron found in spinach. Now, with nutrition like that, it should come as no surprise that Moringa has been advocated to help combat malnutrition. No doubt Moringa oleifera is packed with vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, and other nutrients, but what happens when people eat this stuff? What are the benefits of Moringa oleifera? Well, some research suggests that Moringa may help the thyroid work better. In this study, male and female rats were given Moringa leaf extract for 10 days. Here it was discovered that in the female rats, they reduced their triiodothyroidine levels, or T3 levels. That's the more active of the thyroid hormones by about 30%, which these authors speculated that maybe this might mean that Moringa may be of benefit to people with overactive thyroid glands, also known as hyperthyroidism. It's important to know, however, that no human studies on Moringa treating overactive thyroid problems could be located. I couldn't find any research on this. But if you had an overactive thyroid and wanted to use this experiment as a guide, you need to know that the dosage used was based on how much the animals weighed. In other words, the more they weighed, the more Moringa was used. Is this true for people as well? Well, we don't know. But if we use the study as a guide and do the math for humans, well, then it comes to about 56 grams of Moringa a day per kilogram of body weight. Now, I know not everybody uses the metric system, so I took the liberty of doing a few calculations for you based on different body weights. Regardless, as you can see, if this study is correct, it may take a lot of Moringa to lower thyroid hormone levels. And if you've tried it for hyperthyroidism, leave a comment below and let me know what happened. So, that being said, what about hypothyroidism? Is it possible Moringa might help a low-acting thyroid? Well, we have this very small investigation where only six people fully completed the study. The good news is that these people, all of them, were diagnosed with hypothyroidism. That's good. The people were given 10 grams, 10,000 milligrams of Moringa leaf extract each day for 45 days. So what happened? Here was reported that Moringa reduced thyroid stimulating hormone, TSH levels. Now that's good for people with hypothyroidism, and in addition to that, Moringa also raised both T3 and T4 levels. Those are your two major thyroid hormones. So it raised them up, made them go higher. So this is a very intriguing investigation, but it is just one study, and again, a very small number of people were in the investigation. So it needs to be replicated with more people to see if the results can be duplicated. What about weight loss? Well, in this eight week long investigation, researchers tested a supplement called LI85008F, I didn't make that up, which was composed of two additional ingredients in addition to Moringa. So it just wasn't Moringa, it was three different ingredients. And my hunch is that black pepper was used to increase the absorption of the other nutrients, because black pepper is known to do that. That's why you probably see it in other dietary supplements you may be taking. Also keep in mind that these people consumed only 2,000 calories a day, and they also walked 30 minutes each day. Regardless of all that, what happened? So it was reported that the herbal concoction of these three ingredients promoted significant weight loss of about 10 pounds compared to those who took them placebo. As you can see, they started the study at about 86 kilograms. They dropped down to about 81 kilograms after the study was over, and that's a decrease of 4.76 kilograms, which is about 10 pounds. In addition to that, their body mass index was also reduced. And the formula, in addition to that, increased levels of adiponectin by about 21%. Now, 
Adiponectin is a hormone that's made in our fat cells that appears to play a role in many different things, ranging from lowering appetite to even maybe helping improve diabetes. One question I have about this is that, was the elevation in adiponectin caused by weight loss, because weight loss will do that, or was it caused by the herbal concoction by itself? Bottom line to this, we need more research to know what raised adiponectin levels. This study also noted that Moringa may help people lose weight, but I'm inclined to discount it for the same reasons as the previous investigation, because it combined Moringa with other ingredients. So we don't know how much of the weight loss effect was due to Moringa by itself, or was it a combination of all the other ingredients in this study? How about lowering blood pressure? Well, there is some research that Moringa oleifera seems to lower blood pressure in rats, but what about people? Consumption of Moringa oleifera leaves lowers postprandial blood pressure. 41 healthy people who did not have high blood pressure consumed 120 grams, that's about four ounces, of Moringa leaves. Their blood pressure was checked at various times during the study, and it is reported that Moringa lowered blood pressure two hours after eating. Now, that's nice, but the real test would be to give Moringa to people with high blood pressure and see what happens. When that study comes out, I will do a video on it. What about diabetes? Effective Moringa oleifera leaf capsules on glycemic control in therapy in naive type 2 diabetic patients, a randomized placebo-controlled study, 32 people with type 2 diabetes were given 8 grams, 8,000 milligrams, of Moringa or placebo each day for one month. Here it was reported that Moringa did not work. There was no reduction in blood sugar levels, but systolic blood pressure did go down by about 5 points, which these researchers stated wasn't clinically significant. However, I would call a 5-point drop in systolic blood pressure real-life significant. They also pointed out that hemoglobin A1c didn't go down either, but I wouldn't expect hemoglobin A1c to be reduced after just one month. It's going to take several months to see declines in A1c, so I'd like to see this investigation repeated and last at least four months to see what might happen to hemoglobin A1c levels. Now, regardless of the results of this investigation, in this review of Moringa and blood sugar, it was reported that Moringa might indeed lower blood sugar levels. And while that is encouraging, these reviewers point out that there's not enough research yet that Moringa lowers blood sugar levels better than conventional treatments, such as, for instance, losing weight and exercise. Moving on to cancer, this is another area where Moringa is supposed to shine, and I can say, looking at the study so far, this appears to be an area that's still in its infancy. Yes, preliminary studies involving isolated cells does appear to show that Moringa oleifera has anti-cancer effects, but proof that it kills cancer inside people is so far lacking. So again, let's see what the future studies show. Now, moving on to side effects. I generally feel that it's best to start any new dietary supplement with starting with less than is recommended. That way, if there are negative adverse side effects, taking less should minimize a lot of what you might experience. Side effects that have been reported with Moringa include diarrhea. That said, given the research so far, I'd also be cautious with Moringa if you had hypothyroidism or diabetes. Kidney disease is something else that you want to talk to your doctor about because remember, Moringa has an awful lot of potassium, which may be contraindicated in people whose kidneys don't work so well. Another thing to be aware of is don't take Moringa if you are pregnant. In theory, it might not be safe. And to be further safe, stop taking Moringa at least two weeks before having surgery, just in case it has a blood thinner effect. Bottom line, if you take medications or have any health issues, talk to your doctor first. So what do you think about Moringa oleifera? Have you tried it? Leave a comment below and let me know what you think. Until next time, I'm Joe from SupplementClarity.com. Take care.